What's poppin' y'all? When we think about the Rap Crew G unit, we're tapping into an interesting career filled with friendship, feuds, legal scandals, and most importantly, massive success. Longtime friends and East Coast rappers 50 Cent, Tony Ayo, and Lloyd Banks will always be remembered for not only their drama and their boldness, but also the output of music and the quality to which they were rapping. Whether it was the story of their lead rapper 50 Cent being blackballed from the music industry for his brash behavior, then losing his record deal, or the group going off to record music independently amidst feuds with some of hip-hop's biggest names, G-Unit Records remains one of the most well-known crews to grace the early 2000s. So how did this dynamic group come to be and what led to the label's eventual demise? In the early 2000s, Rap Crew G-Unit, short for Guerrilla Unit, the type of warfare, began by releasing a number of mixtapes which included 50 Cent is the Future, God's Plan, and No Mercy, No Fear, all of which were released in 2002, prior to 50 Cent even coming out with his debut Get Rich or Die Trying. That same year, 50 Cent was discovered by superstar Detroit rapper Eminem. 50 Cent, the solo rapper, would go on to sign a million dollar contract with Shady Records, which was under the umbrella of Dr. Dre's Aftermath Entertainment and Interscope Records. Immediately thereafter, 50 Cent's major label debut Get Rich or Die Trying became a critical and commercial success that sold over 4 million copies in the United States alone and was later certified quadruple platinum by the RIAA. 50 was then given his own record label, a decision that ultimately led to the creation of G-Unit Records. After opening up for business, 50 Cent immediately signed his longtime friends Lloyd Banks and Tony Yayo to the label. Each of the group's founding members, all of whom had been rapping together since they were teenagers, were all born and raised in South Jamaica, a section of Queensboro, New York City. While the members of G-Unit began working on their debut album immediately, Tony Ayo was unfortunately unable to record new material given that he was incarcerated. He did, however, make two appearances on the album, both of which used pre-recorded material. In Tony Ayo's place on the album, 50 Cent decided to sign Tennessee-based rapper Young Buck to both G-Unit Records and to the group. Young Buck would be included as a featured member throughout G-Unit's 2003 debut album titled Beg for Mercy, as well as their first major label appearance as a group on the remix to 50 Cent single P.I.M.P. Their debut studio album featured guest appearances from R&B singers Joe and Butch Cassidy and production from producers such as High Tech, Dr. Dre, and Scott Storch. The album would go on to sell over 3.9 million units in the U.S. and 5.8 million copies worldwide. It would later be certified quadruple platinum by the RIAA as well. The group's debut album also allowed members other than 50 Cent, namely Tony Ayo, Young Buck, and Lloyd Banks, to have a platform for their respective solo work that would follow, such as The Hunger for More that released in 2004, Straight Outta Cashville, also 2004, and Thoughts of a Predicate Felon in 2005. In April 2008, in an interview with Shauna Leviste, if I'm pronouncing her name correctly, of Hot 97 FM, 50 Cent commented that Young Buck was still signed to G-Unit Records even though he was no longer a member of G-Unit. 50 Cent told the press that Young Buck would no longer be a part of G-Unit as a result of his excessive spending and inconsistent behavior. In his interview with Shauna, 50 Cent claimed that Young Buck was publicly stating that he had not been paid royalty checks and had been behaving in a strange way. Case in point, he appeared on stage with his former cash money label mate Lil Wayne, and then shortly after that appearance he dissed him on records with G-Unit. 50 Cent claimed that these were among some of the main reasons G-Unit decided that it would be best to remove him. Two months later, on June 17, 2008, Young Buck responded to 50 Cent's allegation. He responded in the form of a song titled Taped Conversation. On the recording, the game was also featured. The two used the recording to take shots at 50 Cent, Lloyd Banks, and Tony Ayo. When G-Unit released their second album, TOS, Terminate on Sight, on July 1, 2008, Young Buck still appeared on a few recordings despite the fact that the rapper had been ousted out of the group. While the songs had been previously recorded, Young Buck was still credited for his participation as a featured artist. Alongside Young Buck's features, the album also included reggae singer Movado, and production came from artists such as Swizz Beats, Street Radio, The Business, Rick Rock, and Polo the Don. By August 8, 2008, the album would go on to sell 507,000 copies in the United States. 
During the production of G-Unit's album Beg for Mercy, Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine of Interscope Records discovered Los Angeles rapper The Game. Like other early members of G-Unit Records, rapper The Game was also added to the group after both Dr. Dre and Jimmy Iovine proposed the idea in late 2003. The agreed-upon plan was to market The Game as a devotee of 50 Cent's camp of artists. This would lead to The Game making his first appearances as a member of G-Unit on Lloyd Banks and Young Buck's debut albums. The Hunger for More, and Straight Outta Cashville. By 2004, The Game would go on to work on his debut album, which was set to be executive produced by 50 Cent and Dr. Dre. Later that year, in November, The Game would find tremendous success with his second single off the album, How We Do, which featured 50 Cent and became a top 5 hit on the Billboard charts. But it wouldn't take long before tensions began to rise between The Game and members of G-Unit. Beginning in 2005, reports indicated that shortly after the release of the game's debut album, The Documentary, tensions between 50 Cent and the game had escalated into a full-scale feud. However, this feud was not new. Rather, it had been brewing prior to the game's first album, The Documentary. Upon the game's debut release, 50 Cent made public that he felt the game was disloyal for publicly articulating that he did not want to participate in and support G-Unit's feud with other rappers. 50 Cent was also bothered by the fact that the game had even expressed interest in working with artists like Nas and Jadakiss, with whom G-Unit was feuding. By 2005, 50 Cent announced to the press that the game had been kicked out of G-Unit. Among the accusations flying about was that 50 Cent had not received full credit for the creation of the documentary and writing six songs on the game's debut album. Upon hearing of these accusations, the game denied that this had been the case. As the beef heated up, the game decided to confront 50 Cent at New York City's Hot 97 studio. Reports indicated that members of the game's entourage had shot at 50 Cent and other members of the G-Unit entourage. Members of 50 Cent's crew had no choice but to flee the building, and in the midst of the encounter, Hot 97 radio security accidentally shot a member of the game's entourage. Following this near-deadly encounter, 50 Cent and the game decided to hold a press conference on March 9, 2005 to announce their reconciliation and decision to call for a truce. Fans had mixed feelings about the entire situation and what appeared to be an attempt to squash their very public feud. Some fans believed that the two had manufactured this beef as a publicity stunt to boost the sales of their two albums, both of which had just been released. Those suspicions may have been correct. Shortly thereafter reconciling, G-Unit continued to feud with the game, who decided to respond to the beef during a Summer Jam performance. There, he encouraged fans to launch a boycott of G-Unit called GU Not. What fans did not know was that even as the two sides had jointly held a press conference calling for both sides to reconcile, both rappers would spend the next two years attacking one another over numerous diss tracks. After the game's performance at Summer Jam, where he called G-Unit out, the rapper would respond to growing tensions with his recording titled 300 Bars and Run It. The recording, which was from the mixtape You Know What It Is Volume 3, was an extended track aimed at G-Unit as well as members of Rockefeller Records. 50 Cent then responded via his piggy bank music video. In the visuals, the game was depicted as a Mr. Potato Head doll. Both sides would continue to attack each other whether it was over mixtapes of their own, as in the case of the game's mixtapes Ghost Unit and Stop Snitching, Stop Lying, or the work of other closely affiliated artists, as is the case of G-Unit's records artist Spider Loke, who used his music to insult the game. These encounters led to even more responses such as the game going at Spider Loke on the song 240 Bars, Spider Joke. By 2007, tensions brewed yet again, this time between the game and Tony Yayo. Reports indicated that Tony Yayo and his friend Lodi Mack had encountered Czar Entertainment CEO Jimmy Henchman's, the game's manager, 14-year-old son upon leaving a studio. Both Yayo and Mack proceeded to assault Henchman's son. The encounter would eventually lead to Mack's arrest and his sentencing to two years in prison. In the aftermath of the encounter, the game responded with the recording Body Bags featured on his mixtapes, You Know What It Is, Volume 4. G-Unit then hit the game back with the recording We On Some Sh**. In the song, G-Unit criticized Czar Entertainment as well as fellow rappers Cameron and Fat Joe. The feud did not end there. Reports indicated that in 2009, Jimmy Henchman had hired a hitman to kill Lodi Mac. It would take eight years until Henchman was found guilty of murder and sentenced to two life sentences in prison. By June 2010, the game began to publicly express that he would not object to joining the G-Unit in a reunion of sorts. 
Fans responded positively to this news, even going as far as to start a Facebook group intended to encourage the rappers to make a G-Unit comeback. By late 2016, reports seemed to indicate that the two sides had finally decided to end their long-standing beef. The road to reuniting G-Unit did not begin with the game, however. As early as 2014, the original members of G-Unit decided to reunite at that year's Summer Jam event. Even though Tony Ayo and 50 Cent had separately stated that G-Unit was no more as early as February of that year, members of G-Unit Records, including Young Buck, who had departed the group for a six-year period, and Louisiana rapper Kid Kid were added to the group upon its reformation. The day immediately following Summer Jam, G-Unit would release Nam nah, Talking About, a remix of HS87's Grand and Maho Life. Many argue that the release of this song signaled their official comeback. In June 2014, G-Unit would go on to release a number of remixes to popular songs by other artists. These included songs by Drake and R&B stars like Trey Songs and Jeremiah. The group would even decide to release their own original song titled They Talked About Jesus. By June 2014, 50 Cent would make a public announcement that G-Unit was finally working on a studio album that the group was planning to release in late November of the same year. The same month, G-Unit shared with their fans that they would also be releasing a mixtape prior to the official release of their upcoming album. And at midnight on August 25th, 2014, G-Unit surprised their fans and the public at large with the release of their EP titled The Beauty of Independence. The release of this EP marked their first collaborative project in six years. Immediately after the release of The Beauty of Independence, G-Unit decided to release music videos for Watch Me and Changes. While the group had promised an album later that year, they then decided to divide that music into two EP projects. The first had been The Beauty of Independence, and the second would be titled The Beast is G-Unit. Ultimately, the group decided to push that release back to a 2015 date. And instead, on November 10th, 2014, G-Unit released a deluxe version of The Beauty of Independence. The new version included two new songs, Ease Up and Big Body Bends. This EP was later followed up with The Beast is G-Unit, which was finally released to the public on March 3rd, 2015. And yet, even as some members of the group had reunited, some continued to exchange hasty words. Reports indicated that in February of 2014, Tony Yeo was on record claiming that G-Unit had officially broken up. He and 50 Cent were no longer friends, and he had decided to officially retire from music. Yeo claimed that being involved in music and the industry at large had caused him too much stress. He stated that even though he was no longer a member of G-Unit, he felt happy with that decision because he had already accomplished everything that he had set out to do. 50 Cent, however, could not help but chime in. In a series of interviews in April of 2014, 50 Cent made a number of condescending comments about Lloyd Banks and Tony Yeo. 50 Cent claimed that the group had broken up due to ongoing infighting. In addition to the well-known names of G-Unit, the group would eventually go on to add to their roster an individual by the name of Kid Kid. Kid was initially discovered by rapper Lil Wayne while he was performing on a street corner in New Orleans. In the early days of his career, Kid Kid decided to sign a recording contract with Wayne's record label imprint Young Money Entertainment, where he joined as a member of the southern hip-hop group Squad Up. While the group would eventually disband and Kid would then decide to leave Young Money in 2004, by 2011, Kid was signed to yet another hip hop giant, New York City based rapper 50 Cent. Kid's relationship with 50 Cent started in part because of some trouble he had encountered only a month before officially signing with 50. In June 2011, only two weeks after meeting 50 Cent for the first time, Kid Kid was shot six times. Reports suggest that in the aftermath of the shooting, 50 Cent expressed deep empathy with Kid Kid's situation because it was very reminiscent of his own shooting in 2000. 50 Cent decided that instead of allowing the industry to do to Kid what had been done to him, that is Columbia Records walking away from 50 Cent at the time he needed the most, 50 Cent decided to stand by Kid Kid. As a result of this relationship with 50 Cent, Kid Kid would go on to appear on several of 50 Cent's projects, including The Big Ten, released in 2011, the Lost Tape in 2012, and 5, Murder by Numbers, his 2012 project. 50 Cent would permanently add Kid Kid to the G-Unit roster in June of 2014, after the rapper had been prominently featured on 50 Cent's fifth studio album, Animal Ambition. However, despite so much success alongside 50 Cent and his new G-Unit crew, Kid Kid announced on April 11, 2018, that he had left G-Unit Records. The rapper cited wanting to focus on his own independent label, RLLNR Entertainment, for his departure. 
He also mentioned that it was very important to him to be his own boss, just as 50 Cent was. He told XXL Magazine, Fifth is all about that. He's all about you branding yourself. And you can't always expect the person that holds your hand to help you cross the street, you know? So right now, I'm just moving how I'm moving and trying to make it happen. Even though he publicly cited wanting to go the independent route, rumors swirled that something else was at play. According to XXL, many believed that there was beef or conflict at the center of his departure from G-Unit. But Kid Kid quickly squashed those rumors saying that his decision was really just an attempt to do what was right for his own career. He made sure to publicly articulate that he hoped fans would understand his decision. Once a person sees you moving on your own, they act like you can't boss up because 50's boss. I know I'm Kid Kid, but I'm still a man. In addition to Kid Kid, G-Unit also included other members such as Shaw Money XL. Shaw Money XL was a well-known DJ, songwriter, and record producer from New York who had worked closely with 50 Cent. Not too long after Interscope had decided to give 50 Cent his own G-Unit label in 2003, Shaw Money XL quickly became president of G-Unit Records. In a 35-minute video 50 Cent released in 2015, he discussed why his friendship ended with Shaw Money. In the video, 50 suggested that the beef between the former friends stemmed from financial disagreements and greed. 50 Cent claimed, When the money came, when the check came, Shaw started going like everybody else. Just started reaching in my pockets, trying to get the money, as much money as they could get. He charged the most he's ever charged for a track for Bloodhound on Get Rich or Die Trying. I said, cool, just give him the money. Then he came back around and said, how do you charge for studio time? 50 Cent then added, he asked him for 50000 I said, cool. Then I thought about it and said, if I give him 50000 that's it, because he's been paid for all of his services, everything. I said, nah, don't take 50000 Take 30000 and a point. 30000 and a point on the sales on my record. That one point was worth $1.3 million because we sold 13 million records on that first album. So I gave him $1.33 million instead of 50000 And then, after the record took off and sold so many copies, Jimmy and them came around, but Shaw didn't take no risk. He took all of his money off the table. And then Jimmy Iovine came around and G-Unit Records was ready. So they cut the check for G-Unit Records. They gave me $15 million. When I get to $15 million, I see them round again, looking like they're ready to start reaching into my pockets. So I told them, you ain't getting none of that money because you took your equity out of the situation immediately. You were paid for everything you've done. Despite their beef, Sean Money XL claimed he was not intimidated by 50 Cent's totalitarian tactics. He immediately took shots back at 50 Cent on the Twitter platform. He stated, Don't believe the hype. Why are we talking about me instead of good music? Where are the hits at? I've been consistent since I left. You help somebody who is helpless and he takes a dump on you every chance he gets. Let me tell my side now. Walmart ass nigga, you get what you pay for. A cheap person will do cheap things. Who wants to be partners with him? They all fall out eventually. So let's talk facts, not lies. You destroyed what was built and you will continue to do that. I feel sorry for you, bro. One of the most surprising exits from G-Unit was the departure of Lloyd Banks. Lloyd Banks had long worked alongside his childhood friends 50 Cent and Tony Ayo and had had great success as a member of G-Unit. However, by June 2018, Banks took to Instagram to announce that he was leaving G-Unit Records. While many believed that Banks and 50 Cent were still friends, 50 Cent would eventually admit that the two had stopped speaking. And yet, four months after disclosing his feud with his former childhood friend and longtime fellow G-Unit member, 50 posted a photo with the caption, Check out my boy Lloyd Banks, new mixtape coming soon, Independence Day. He's doing his own thing, and you know it's going to be loaded with bars. This puzzled fans as they thought the two were not friends. And even in the midst of this social media post, rumors continued to swirl that their relationship was no longer amicable. In an interview with Big Boy, 50 Cent disclosed that, Banks, he just, I don't even know. He couldn't even tell you like at any point when you speak to him where the problem is. I put him like where I put my son Marquise. Like they just have something internal going on with them that gives them some sort of resentment towards me. And I just don't even care about what's going on. Trav, a former associate of G-Unit, also then took to Instagram Live to give greater context on the matter. Trav stated, Banks' father died, bro. And Banks was sad, bro. All Banks wanted to do was him to pull up like, yo, bro, I'm sorry, f your condolences. Because a nigga 50 don't come from no family, he tried to play like this fake role like, man, you ain't even know your father. The news of their feud being connected to the news of Banks' father's death seemed to have weight to it. 
In a 2014 interview with MTV, 50 Cent explained that he initially started drifting away from his childhood friend after his father died, and he started to become what 50 Cent suggests was musically uninspired. 50 stated, all right, he passed away, but you can't just go home and stay home. Even though there were other members of G-Unit who spoke about the ongoing situation between 50 Cent and Banks, Lloyd himself did not speak on the matter. Instead, he uttered words on several recordings that appeared to be aimed at his former friend, 50 Cent. After his departure and in the midst of his silence, Banks would go on to release a clothing line and continue to tour, though he did not release new projects, other than a few freestyles here and there. This would eventually change in 2021 when Banks took to Instagram to tease fans about a possible new music release. As part of this surprise, he released a video with a brief spoken word monologue from poet Rashawn Brown, as well as a track list and cover art for what would be a June 4th, 2021 release, his first album in 11 years following his 2010 album, Hunger for More 2. The album titled The Course of the Inevitable, or COTI for short, would receive fairly positive reviews and go on to sell 12,000 copies in its first week. In addition to being excited about Banks' release, many loyal G-Unit fans would also be curious about whether the 18-track project contained references to the ongoing beef between Banks and his former G-Unit boss 50 Cent. Many fans suspected that Banks meant to address 50 Cent in the album's song Stranger Things, where the rapper says, When your effed up behavior turns irregular quick. Sometimes the pressure overwhelms when you're the head of the clique. But don't get ahead of yourself. I ain't bending for shit. Nobody sees your vision until you're successful. Your favorite's nowhere near me when I'm dedicated. Always humble, usually disciplined, and never hated. Call me quiet, call me lazy, talent never faded. It's frustrating when your grinding ain't appreciated. Should have been dead in my 20s, shoot, at least I made it. Guess I gotta prove myself again, increase your payment. Many fans claim that this lyric was in response to a claim that 50 Cent made in his book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter, where he called him lazy. In addition to Lloyd Banks leaving, G-Unit also had to worry about Tony Ayo's constant legal issues. Tony Ayo, a stage name that referenced the colloquial word used for cocaine and the main character from the 1983 film Scarface, first encountered legal trouble in 2002 when he was arrested for weapons possession. According to reports, Yeo was caught with a Glock 20 handgun and a Colt AR-15 in the trunk of his car. When police stopped him, they discovered that he's also had an outstanding warrant for a previous charge. Yeo was immediately arrested and sentenced for bail jumping. He would go on to spend a year of his life in prison at Lakeview Incarceration Correctional Facility as a result. By January 8, 2004, Tony Yeo was out on parole. However, the very next day, he was arrested yet again this time. Tony Ayo was charged with possessing a forged passport. The G-Unit rapper would go on to serve time in federal prison for a little over a month. It was at this time and that his record label imprint G-Unit and Detroit rapper Eminem would begin a public campaign which they called Free Yeo. While this campaign was going on outside of the doors and bars of his prison, Yeo was not aware of how much attention Free Yeo was really getting. The scope of the attention became immediately clear to him once he saw Eminem wearing a free Yayo t-shirt on stage at the 2003 Grammy Awards. Once he was eventually released, Tony Yayo would jump right back into his musical career and release Ain't No Click as part of Lloyd Banks' debut album, The Hunger for More. By March of 2007, Tony Yayo was in hot water yet again. This time, the G-Unit rapper was arrested for allegedly assaulting Jimmy Henchman's 14-year-old son. Reports suggested that he, 50 Cent, and members of their entourage approached the child and pushed him against a nearby wall. Tony Ayo then allegedly hit the teenager several times and said, F Czar Entertainment. Despite reports, Tony Ayo pleaded not guilty, and 50 Cent later proved his innocence by using video footage from his Connecticut mansion where he claimed he had been at the time of the alleged incident. That same year, the violence would be turned on to Ayo's family. According to reports, on April 18, 2007, Yeo's mother's home was sprayed with bullets. Many argue that the violent attack was connected to Tony Yeo's house arrest. Less than three months later, Tony Yeo was once again in a courtroom where the judge heard details of his alleged assault. At the end of the ordeal, the prosecution offered Tony Yeo a nine-month prison sentence in exchange for pleading guilty. Despite the offer, the G-Unit rapper rejected the proposal to plead guilty, and by February of 2008, the situation finally came to an end once prosecutors decided to drop the charges. Despite all the internal feuds and subsequent legal issues had by various members of the group, one of its members, the star, 50 Cent, had tremendous success following the death of G-Unit Records. 
11 years after G-Unit's debut album release, the American crime drama TV series Power first debuted on the Stars Network on June 7, 2014. Created and produced in collaboration with Courtney A. Kemp, Power told the story of James St. Patrick, played by actor Amari Hardwick, a witty and yet ruthless drug dealer who goes by the alias of Ghost. Fans were enamored with St. Patrick's character, who comes to power while moving through the ranks of the drug underworld, but who ultimately wishes to leave the criminal world to pursue legitimate business as a nightclub owner. In the midst of his efforts, fans watched as Ghost brought catastrophe to his life, whether it was in his attempt to avoid police capture, having an extramarital affair, or managing what was often turbulent and shifting economic and political alliances. With the release of the hit TV series Power, 50 Cent was quickly becoming a television mogul. Along with his growing fan base, the television show had positive reviews for its pacing, its story, and even its acting, which also featured 50 Cent himself. The show quickly became one of Starz Network's most highly rated series and one of cable television's most watched shows until the show came to an end on February 9, 2020. In the midst of Power's success, 50 Cent was on record stating that he would like to forget about his past with G-Unit. In an interview with DJ Who Kid for his Who Army Live YouTube show, DJ Who Kid asked whether 50 Cent wanted to translate the story of G-Unit to film, to which 50 Cent responded, I don't care to do that. I'd like to forget G-Unit. At the height of his power fame, it appeared that the tension between G-Unit members was filled with nothing but disdain. With the release of his book, Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter, 50 Cent was on record asserting that Banks and Yayo had failed to adapt to the changing music landscape. With that being said, whether or not there will ever be any more G-Unit albums, that's probably out of the way. The legacy has already been laid down though, even if the label hasn't updated its catalog of music in many years. But let me know what y'all think in the comments. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you enjoyed. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching. Peace.